I just beat a game I have spent hundreds of dollars on for the first time. Well, no, that's not quite right. It's more accurate to say series, so I beat the first game in a series I have spent hundreds of dollars on for the first time. And the name of that series and game is Dark Souls, or the Soulsborne series if you include Bloodborne and Demon Souls. But yes, despite buying all of the titles available on PC including the DLC, going out to purchase a PS4 Pro exclusively to play Bloodborne someday, and also Persona 5, it is only now that I have finished the first, not including Demon Souls, game in the Soulsborne series, and I can say without a shadow of the doubt that it has been a most excellent experience all the way through, for the most part. The game starts with one of the single best CG cutscenes I have ever seen in a game, and despite restarting dozens of times trying to play this game, never once have I skipped it. We are introduced to a world at war between dragons and gods. We see mighty figures, the warrior king S. Gwyn and his legions of armored knights raining lightning bolts on their enemy, the mysterious pyromancer the witch of Isolith and her daughters burning the world, Nido, the first of the dead, unleashing a fog that blights and dooms all that comes in contact with it, and Seath, a dragon with no scales, who betrays his scale brethren, divinity wins and the world becomes prosperous, but it is not to last. See, the fire from which these gods and the world at large has gained so much is fading, and with this a curse has appeared afflicting humanity, one that leaves the bearer unable to die and slowly losing themselves each and every time they do so. And that is where we begin our journey. We are one of these accursed undead, who are corralled as soon as they are discovered and put to be forgotten into the undead asylum. And that is essentially the extent of the story Dark Souls hands to you. The rest you must find on your own, either through the description of items, further dialogue from character quest lines, or outside the game from the game's passionate fandom. Seriously though, if you want to know more about the story and lore, Body Video is the guy to hit up. But while the story is not given to you, the atmosphere is absolutely top notch. The world has a oftentimes grimy rundown feel. This is not a world on the verge of collapsing. The world has collapsed, and people are simply desperately trying to push it back. Every zone is unique and memorable, having its own flavor of enemies and NPCs, each a unique challenge and character all to itself. Undead burgs run down in general sense of despair, Blight Town living up and then going beyond what its name implies, and the City of Gods and Orlando's opulence and grandeur. All areas are fleshed out and a treat to explore, for the most part. And then there is the combat. I decided to go for a sword and board style character, a shield in one hand and a weapon of ridiculous size and damage in the other. Each encounter was tense in a way that I have only felt in other games during boss fights. Death is something that comes quickly and infallibly when mistakes are made. Attacks are slow to come out compared to most games, but much more damaging in return. Each encounter has a chance of killing you and robbing you of your souls, both a currency and experience to level up. The game is tense all the way through, making for a deliciously masochistic experience. But the real star of the show is the boss fights. Each and every boss in the game, with the exception of the Bed of Chaos and the Centipede Demon, is phenomenal. The designs are awe-inspiring, beasts suitably grotesque and terrifying, and those who are humanoid, legendary heroic figures given form and movement. Each one is a test of what you have learned so far, trials of combat that test your understanding and mastery of the game's combat systems. Defeating these bosses is something of a prize in and of itself, the sense of satisfaction unmatched by any game I have played before. Dark Souls is a phenomenal game, and if you have yet to play it, then do so. The game often goes on sale, especially during the seasonal Steam sales, and even if it's not, I recommend you pick it up and play it through. You will not regret it. Well, that's my thoughts on Dark Souls 1. If you like this video, like it. Look through my other videos, consider subscribing and ringing the bell. If you didn't, well, there's a button for that too. And please consider checking out my other channel where my playthrough of this game lives, along with supporting me either via Patreon or other means listed down below. Well, that's been me, Juan John John. I shall see you, hopefully, next time.